Ray Haycraft with Fuel the Scene Magazine, here with Josh from Stick to Your Guns. What's up? And we are here at Welcome to Rockville, and his mom is out there somewhere. My mom and my stepdad, Homer, they have never seen me play in Stick to Your Guns. Really? I've been in like a million bands, and the last time they saw me play was in 1999, when my old band from Jacksonville, Evergreen Terrace, put out a record. And that's the only time they've ever that's seen me amazing. play. That's amazing. So that's this fucked is, this up. Is like, well, that, that means today is like is gonna be incredible. No pressure. Yeah, maybe. You should like, I don't really you should, care. like throw something at them. I should. <laughs> I should like command the crowd. Like, all right, let's get the crowd. Like, smash pit, them in right the Right there. See that lady? Crush pit Homer. Around her right now. Wall of death. So, <laughs> True View has not been out that long. You all are still, you know, correct. Uh, you're, how much of the set right now is is new stuff, and how much is from your catalog? Um, I think today we're gonna be able to squeeze eight songs in, and we're gonna do four songs from True View. Awesome. Um, you know, and it's one of those things. Anytime you put on a new record, you're always kind of like hesitant to sprinkle them in. Right. And then on this cycle, we're like, man, fuck this. We love the songs. We like playing them live. Who gives a shit? You know, well, like we're just proud of them, gonna like... play at the crowd instead of for the crowd <laughs> on on this cycle. I think you've earned it. At thanks, this point. thanks. I appreciate you it. You can play whatever the fuck you want. That's fine. Now with True View, now you all are such a energetic band on stage. You all just exude your passion all over the place. Thank you. How do you translate that into the studio when you're in a box? You know, it's. That's a great question, and um, I don't know how we do it. Uh, especially this last record, it was it was really crazy. I think that this record kind of has a darker tone to it. Mm -hmm. And when I take a step back and I realize, oh, we recorded this this record in a physically dark, gloomy place, and a friend's house who was going through a horrible breakup, and like like gear was falling apart, all of these things, and then that's really inside of the record and I'm like oh this is great that like we were all kind of depressed going through this <laughs> shit and it came out of the record so um, for, for us I think that we've been lucky with the, the producers that we've worked for but we really strive to, to try to take the energy that we have live and put it into the songs when we're writing them um, and even though I think especially with True View I think all the songs sound great on record when we play them live I think there's I think that we will always be a live band I think right. that's just, that's what the energy really is. Do you find that songs evolve as you play them live? Absolutely. Um, like uh, the song, The Sun, The Moon, The Truth, it's mm -hmm. the second track on the record. Um, the first couple of times we played it, you could tell like, the crowd's kind of like, Nyeh. and then we decided to open up the tour with it. Um, we're on tour with Parkway right now. And last night they played here, but we played in Atlanta. And it was one of those things that as soon as we started playing, the whole crowd went fucking nuts. Yeah. They're all singing along, they're stage diving, they're jumping on each other's heads. So it's like one of those things. But even with you know songs from our other records, like We Still Believe and um, What Choice Did You Give Us, those all took like four or five months of touring right. until they catch on. And we just know that's kind of the name of the game. So we just punish people with the songs until they're forced <laughs> to have a reaction. Do you ever change things about the songs, like based on people's reactions? Um, sometimes, maybe we'll like extend a little part, or we'll slow down a part. Like, there's a couple of songs where we'll slow the breakdown down mm -hmm. just a little bit, so people really just fuck each other up. Um, <laughs> but uh, we don't ever really do things like completely different, like. I don't know. I mean, we've done some acoustic versions sometimes, but we don't do a thing where like nine guys run up on stage and play like <laughs> 18 drums or anything like that. I mean, you could. I mean, we should. You should. Now you have something to aspire exactly, to. Exactly, exactly. 18 guys with nine drums. We hired a, a girl to come play cello one time for a block of songs, and it was fucking cello awesome. Cello makes everything better. We finished the set with it, and what was crazy is like, you know, she was like this girl that we just hired off the internet she wasn't like some punk hardcore some girl Craigslist. and she came into practice and she's kind of like you know she's very polite and proper and you can tell she's classically trained and then we started playing there's a thousand people like losing her mind and i look over and she's like <laughs> yeah and like, and she's fucking banging her head i was like this is fucking sick so now you need a full-time that's what we need yeah we're just gonna slowly like incorporate a full orchestra oh it's just amazing. delinquents so off of True View so far with the songs that you are able to play live, what's been resonating with the fans the most? Um, I think Married to the Noise. I think the general concept of like having that connection to the music, people really get stoked on. Jesse usually talks about 
the idea of the song before we play it. I think that's always a song that, um, when he, whenever Jesse is a very um, charismatic speaker from stage, right. so that gets people really like interested and engaged, and, and just the feeling of the song, I think, like has that has that energy that people like connect to. But our, I think our favorite song as a band to play live right now is "Doomed by You," which is interesting because that was arguably one of my least favorite songs on the record like really? as a listener but now when we play i'm like yeah i want to put my head through a wall so um so yeah that's and that's the one with songs. the video that just dropped right yeah we did like a lyric video like live mm -hmm. footage and shit yeah that's awesome well beyond that one what is your favorite song to play live either from this album or from before that you just don't want to let go of um on this on this album i love playing the sun the moon the truth um and then old songs um i still love playing nobody uh i think that's one that like we always get a great reaction to and it's just it's also like an easy song for like like technically technical wise to like jump around to and not really about like fucking up too bad which i fuck up every song because i took like guitar lessons for a month when i was 13 and then i went oh a power chord i don't need to know anything else i have reached the apex that's it i'm done <laughs> Well, with a career as as awesome and as uh, broad as you all have had, you, you've kind of done all the things and and hit the bucket list items, but what's still on your bucket list? Um, actually, we're trying to do, we last year we were the first American hardcore band to play East Africa. Oh, that's awesome. And so that we, we played Kenya, we played Nairobi, which was fucking insane so we got like a taste of doing something like that yeah. and now we're like oh we want to go tour. all over Africa like Central Africa um, different places that nobody's ever played so we, we kind of want to do that but actually playing these Danny Wimmer festivals we've never done that and um, when we got the offer to do it that's why we actually ended up doing the Parkway tour yeah because we're like all right let's do these festivals we've never played to this type of crowd we're never really involved in the radio rock scene right and so it's cool for us like we're at a point in our career I think where we're just ready to take challenges yeah. so it's like all right yeah we'll go into our Parkway Drive we'll play these kind of festivals and we'll just see what happens that's awesome that is awesome what uh, words of wisdom do you have for your fans watching at home just make sure you stretch before you come to the show, don't want to pull a hamstring, um, and stay hydrated. Stay hydrated. That is extremely relevant advice right now. Very relevant. Let me relevant. just say. It yes. is, is a little rough out there. Please and you really, here yourself. you really need some sunblock. You're talking to me. <laughs> our, our drummers walking around with like a five-gallon bucket of sunblock just going early and often, early and often, like painting his entire body. Prevention is the key here. Yeah. There you go. Those are your, your advice sure for uh, the fans back home. Well, thank you so much for thank taking time much. with us, and have a great set and rest of your festival. Thanks a lot. Have a wonderful time here. I will. I'm going to hide from the sun. Good. <laughs>